One of those topics is diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's a very hot topic right now in business, other organizations trying to create good environments for their employees. Uh, so we're going to start out with that. A few things first with MidJourney. You do have to pay to subscribe now. It used to have an open beta period where you could dive in and do some things for free. Right now, I'll show you the subscription plans that they want you to sign up for. I have signed up for the basic plan, which is $10 a month or $8 if you want to pay for a full year up front, $96 for the year. Just That's the first thing. you got to sign up on Discord, go to midjourney.com and, and figure out your plan. And then once you're in, you'll be looking at a screen like this. They want you to go to one of these newbies channels. So I'm in newbies124 right here. And the first thing first is you're going to type in backslash imagine. That gives you a line for creating a prompt. And we're going to start out with something just very simple. I like mentioned a moment ago, we want to talk about diversity, equity, inclusion. So I'm going to say diverse group of employees. And we'll just leave it at that. We'll start with something very simple, and I'll show you how you can add to the prompt to get different results. So we're going to hit return. And now it's working on it. It says waiting to start. One thing to know is that you can be in two different modes in mid-journey. You can be in fast mode or relax mode. You get a certain amount of fast minutes that's accessing the, the mid-journey server to do your images. And when you're in fast mode, you're getting it an image in about one minute. Whereas if you're in relax mode, it can take anywhere between zero and ten minutes. And then those relax modes do not count against the total so my image looks like it's pretty much done. They give me a grid of four images here. These look very boring. <laughs> what we can do then is say, okay, wasn't really happy with that. Now I'm going to do, let's do it. Let's have it do something like a um, cinematic style. So you can type in cinematic style, diverse group of employees, and then working together rather than just standing there staring into this. The screen looking very boring working together in harmony and hit return so this image should look completely different than the one that was just generated for me which I'm happy about because I hated the one that was just generated so mid journey has completed my second attempt at creating an image of a diverse set of employees working together not loving this one much better at least they are the first one is just crazy looks like a glamour shot in a studio second one they're at least potentially in a workplace with a computer in front of them. Uh, boy, they're really having a good time uh, looking at whatever's on the screen. This one at least feels like they're working a little bit. A weird set of something, lights or pickup sticks in front of the laptop here. Very bizarre. Here's something else that I'll said is problematic uh, that's showing the Apple logo. If you were going to use this image, you'd have to make sure that you're taking out any company logo it, the same rules apply for AI images on the stock sites as any other type of images. You can't show, unless you're going to submit as editorial, you can't show company logos. So I'm going back to the, to the thread on Discord. I don't like this one either. So you can see, working in mid-journey, it's a lot of trial and error. I'm going to do imagine again. The other thing you can do is set up an aspect ratio. These were square images. I'm going to try AR for aspect ratio, 16 colon 9. That gives me kind of a traditional cinematic widescreen view. Again, this type of format might be good for people who want something in a PowerPoint presentation or on a, on a web screen where they, they need a wide angle image. So let's do diverse group employees together in harmony. So these are a little bit more interesting. Let's zoom in here, open in browser. So I guess all four of these are much more acceptable than the ones that we saw earlier. They're at least, this one's kind of boring, very stock photo-ish. Uh, this one, I like the illustrated effect here. You really have to watch on illustrations. Uh, other ones I've done, they, they're missing an eye, they have too many fingers. I think this one is probably my favorite down here, if I had to choose one of the four. Uh, it's very interesting, this watercolor effect, how it blends off at the bottom. 
So we've created one image that we like, we've saved it. We're going to go ahead and upload that to the agencies later. I'll show you the process for how to upscale that uh, after we create one more example, because I wanna show you how you use the seed to iterate on an image that you kind of like in mid-journey, but you want it to do it a little bit better. And how do you build on something that is already existing uh, without starting from scratch? One topic that has been selling pretty well for me lately in the agencies has been the idea of consumer debt customers falling behind on bills and looking for ways to uh, improve their financial situation. So I'm going to try that as a prompt here. Going to imagine and looking at customer debt. Consumer looking at a bill. So you can see I've got four images here all roughly similar with a guy uh, looking at a bill sitting at a desk. Let's just say for whatever reason I wanted the customer to be a female customer. So I'm going to do the same prompt again, but using a seed. So first I'm going to do imagine, get my prompt ready here. I'm going to copy the same exact information, the same exact prompt I wanted. And I'm going to type dash dash seed and provide a number for this grid of images to say, I like the style, I like most of the things in it, I just wanted a female customer instead of a male. So you need to go and grab the, right click on the grid Go to Add Reaction and choose the envelope. If the envelope doesn't show up for you like it does for me here, it shows up at the top because I use it many times. For you using it the first time, it might not show up, so you can go and do a search. Type in envelope. Use the first one, just a plain old envelope. And what that's going to do is send you a message into your inbox in the upper right of the screen. So here the message is in my inbox. It gives me a seed for this set of four images. I'm going to copy that. Go back to the prompt that I started down here putting in the same exact information as my original search and pasting seed number after the word seed. So what I was just testing here is putting in the same exact prompt with the seed number that it gave me, gives me the exact same images. So if I were to now want a female version of this customer, I'd copy in the entire thing, including the seed and go down and ask for another image to be generated, but saying, female consumer. So you can see here that the images that are building are somewhat similar to the ones I had with the male customer. They're framed similarly. They are both seated at a desk with a piece of paper in front of them. Uh, there's some differences obviously in them. But now let's say the customer is happy because she's found some financial relief. We want to show her in a much better emotional state. So we're going to use the same exact prompt and we're going to say happy female customer. Now while we're waiting for that to show up, I'm going to show you how to check on what your balance is in terms of available minutes. If you click on info, you can see information on your profile. Here we go. It shows that I've still got 96% of my minutes left. I've generated 43 images so far. They've all been in the fast setting as opposed to the relax, which relax, like I said, can take more time to produce, but it doesn't go against your total minutes here. So here's now what it's given me, uh, four different images now of a happy female customer looking at the bill. Let's say we, we're happy with one of these and we're going to do some upscaling. I'm going to grab this one. I don't particularly like it. I don't think I'm going to upload it, but I'm going to use that as an example. So we can click on it, open in browser. It's going to give us the higher res version of it. I don't know, it's kind of growing on me. Somebody's excited to have gotten something in the mail. Happiness, excitement is always something that strikes an emotional chord on the microstock agencies. This, this might pop off of a search engine result page in the agencies. So I've saved it to my desktop. I'm gonna show you now a tool that I use to upscale images before I submit them because obviously you can't submit something that's 1024 by 1024 to the agencies. They'll get rejected for too small resolution. I use bigjpg.com. Okay, there it is. It's showing up uh, in the queue. I can click start. It's very simple. I'm going to click it. With this free version, you can go up to four times, which is good enough for uh, upscaling for the agencies. It should give me a decent resolution. I'm going to go up to high noise reduction, not necessarily highest. This should give me some nice smoothing of any noise that's in the image. Click OK and start. All right, so it has completed the upscaling. I'm going to download it and see what we got. So I've opened my happy customer image in Photoshop just to show you what we've been given. Image size, what we have is four 096 by 4096, which is good enough for the agencies. But let's see how good a job that this program, Big JPG, did 
Let's zoom in, looking at 64% there, pretty good, but the true test is when you're looking at 100% or more, there's 100%. Looks pretty good. I'm not seeing pixelation or rough edges, any bit mapping. Looks good. Just wanted to show you an example of the decent job that Big JPG does for upscaling your AI generated images. I'm going to save this, going to keyword it in the next step, and then upload it to Adobe Stock Dreamstime 123RF and see if they accept. So obviously I'm watching the sales performance on these images at the different agencies really closely and I'm going to be having lots of updates on the sales and downloads here in this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Look at my other videos on how to get started in Microstock if you're just still on the fence about it or you want to improve your performance, see how I've done in Microstock lately, what are the topics that sell for me, how I've been able to generate a six-figure income for the past several years, and I'll see you next time.